Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at damping, light damping, critical damping, heavy damping, and then we'll finish with a summary. We're going to introduce a new concept called damping. We already know that a child on a swing is an example of simple harmonic motion. The child will swing back and forth through an equilibrium position and undergo simple harmonic motion. When we talk about simple harmonic motion, we assume the oscillations go on forever. However, in real life, we know that if there isn't a driving force pushing the child on a swing, the child will eventually come to a stop. So initially it's oscillating with a certain amplitude A, and after some time, the amplitude of these oscillations is going to decrease. So it now has a smaller amplitude. And this is as a result of dissipative forces such as friction and air resistance, which causes the total energy of the system to decrease. So there's some friction acting between the swing and the bar of the swing. And there's also air resistance acting on the child as they swing through the air. And this is going to cause the total energy of the system, E, to decrease. We call this effect damping. And we define a damped oscillation as one where the amplitude of the oscillations decreases over time as a result of resistive forces. There are different forms of damping. For example, we're going to discuss light, heavy, and critical damping. So an example of light damping is when there's some friction acting, for example, a mass moving along a table. Heavy damping occurs when there's a lot of friction, for example, a mass moving in oil. And there's a third type of damping called critical damping, which we see in car suspension systems. And this is an example of a damper. Now we're going to talk in a little bit more detail about what light damping is. Light damping, which is sometimes called underdamping, occurs when the resistive forces acting on an oscillating mass are small. So here we have three different types of oscillator, and all of these oscillators are subjected to small resistive forces. For example, the pendulum will stop swinging due to air resistance, the mass on a spring will eventually stop oscillating due to air resistance, and the guitar string is eventually going to stop vibrating. As the system loses energy in the form of heat, the amplitude of the oscillations decrease over a period of time. So initially we have the mass on the string oscillating with a large amplitude. And as time goes on, the amplitude gets smaller until eventually the amplitude is zero and the oscillations stop. We find that the amplitude decreases by the same fraction after every successive cycle. And we call this exponential decay. So let's look at a graph of displacement against time for light damping. So displacement x is plotted against time t on the x-axis, and you can see that the amplitude of the oscillations is decreasing over time, and we refer to this as exponential decay. However, note that the period remains unchanged because the period is independent of the amplitude. So again we have displacement x against time t, and notice that the time taken for each cycle remains the same, even though the amplitude is decreasing. And this means that they all have the same time period t. Now we're going to talk in a little bit more detail about what critical damping is. Consider a speedometer in a car. When the car is at rest, the speedometer shows a value of zero. When a car is accelerating, the speedometer quickly changes to show the new speed of the car. So say our car accelerates to reach a speed of 60 kilometers per hour. The speedometer is gonna go from zero to 60 to show the new speed of the car. We find that the arrow does not oscillate about a point as this would confuse the driver. So we don't want the arrow on our speedometer to oscillate back and forth. And the reason that it does not oscillate is because the speedometer is critically damped. We define critical damping as when the displacement of an object decreases to zero in the shortest time possible without any oscillation. Let's again look at our displacement time graph with displacement on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. In green is our familiar light damping curve. And in red, we've plotted a critically damped oscillator. You'll see that actually no oscillations occur and the displacement changes to zero in the quickest time possible. Critical damping is a useful tool for engineers when they need to remove oscillation from a system. So engineers think about critical damping a lot. For example, suspension springs are used to reduce the force on a car when its wheels are jolted by a bumpy road. So as the car goes over a bumpy road, it's going to move up and down. And we must stop the springs from oscillating by using oil dampers. 
So here's a diagram showing the wheel of a car and a suspension spring with an oil damper. If we take a side on view of the damper, we can see that the piston is damped in oil and this stops the spring from oscillating. Now we're going to discuss another type of damping called heavy damping. Consider a door with dampers such that the door takes a long time to return to its closed position when opened. So here is a damper causing the door to move back to its closed position very slowly. We say that the door is heavily damped. Heavy damping is when it takes longer for an object to return to equilibrium than if it was critically damped. So let's again look at our displacement time graph. In green we have our lightly damped oscillator, in red we have our critically damped oscillator, and in purple we have heavy damping. And notice that both heavy damping and critical damping do not oscillate, but critical damping returns to equilibrium in the shortest amount of time, whereas heavy damping takes a very long time to return to equilibrium. Another example of a critically damped system is a mass on a spring submerged in oil. So here is our equilibrium position and the mass is moving slowly through oil. The damping is so great that the mass returns slowly to equilibrium without oscillating. So the friction on the mass due to the oil is so large that the mass is only going to return very very slowly to equilibrium. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap or buy smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.